It's time for I Believe with Dr. Gwen Ford. As usual, this is another 30 minutes that's just going to zoom by. So right now I'm going to do what I always do, pick up the phone, call someone, share the show, and tell them to have their cell phone ready because they might want to text someone else and share the show. Today, I have a young lady who I've known for several years, and you're not going to believe she's, from when I first met her, she had done one book. Now, I can't even tell you how many, but right now, you think about a desperate housewife. Don't lose that thought and come right back. Be sure to call a friend and ask them to tune in. Call us right now. Our prayer lines are open. Please join the body of believers. God put in my heart five years ago to produce this show, and it's about uniting the body of believers. And every show, we're going to reach out and touch you guys and see if we can't unite you as a body of believers, one by one. As in Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, we should be one body, praising our one Lord and our one God. It's not about where you go to church or if you go to church or, you know, it's about do you believe? Have faith. Believe in God. Become a believer. If God is in your heart, the world changes. Your whole life changes. And you'll be so happy because you're going to be full of God's love. I want you to join our body of believers. Yes, I'm pointing at that. Or text me. I mean, how much easier does it get, you guys? But join the body of believers. So together we can all say, I believe. Yeah. All right, you guys. Now, you're going to really just sit back and relax and get ready to enjoy this interview because this is a, a friend of mine and a lady that I admire a lot. And she's a very strong woman of God. But she's gone in a direction that I'm amazed at. Let's welcome to our I Believe cameras, Miss Becky Seaton. Hey, Becky. Yeah. God bless you. You look so beautiful. Well, thank you. But you always look the picture of fashion. <laughs> With hand-me-downs, mostly. <laughs> hey, I know the feeling. I love it. You make them look great. Now, when I first met you, you had you were working. I, I, I don't know if you're still there, so I won't say the name. But anyway, you are a good chef. And I went to your home, and the food was so good. Everything was delicious. And you wrote a, a cookbook. That's right. And That's why my husband married me, because I could cook. <laughs> I tell everybody he went to school with Dolly Parton, but he married me because she could just sing and I can cook. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's cute. So now, tell me what you're up to now. Well, just um, as of Sunday, Okay. Uh, we had another request for this book. This is a book that I wrote about two or three years ago, and we sold out. So I was not Yay! planning. <laughs> I was not planning to have it reprinted because it was a very expensive project. And we had my husband and I have uh, we host a small group in our home, a Bible study yeah. in our home on Sunday nights, and we had a couple of guests that would net well. They had been there twice. And at the end of the meeting, the gentleman said, now you have written a book. And he said, my daughter came to visit here from Georgia. She got hold of that book and she could not put it down. Wow. It was powerful. And he said, we need several more copies. I said, I don't have any more. I've sold out. He said, well, you've got to have some more. Get me more. <laughs> yeah. I told him. This was an expensive project. When I first wrote that book, and I really felt like God wanted me to write it. It was not for a fundraiser. It was not to make money, but it was because I felt like it was a mandate from God to write that book wow. to help people, to help women in particular that have a lot of problems going through life with a lot of problems. 
And um, so anyway, he said, how much money is it going to take? And I told him, I think it was around a thousand I had spent, you know, in just getting like a hundred or copies or so. And next thing I knew, he was unzipping his billfold and he plopped down a, a mount in the middle of the floor. And next thing I knew, people, other people, there were only 13. It's a small Praise group. Praise God. You know, Jesus had 12 knew, disciples. Yes, we had 13, 13 people that night. And out of that, I was flabbergasted. And everybody got around on their knees and put their hands out and prayed that this book would go into the hands that needed it. Because the book has a lot of, it has a lot of humor, but it also has a lot of serious things too. Because in my early life, I had gone through a, a very deep depression. Really? I really did. Wow. But God gives joy in I mean, the morning. I was gonna say, I'd never know that. No, you, but I so did. Happy. I had. I have no idea, but I refused to take any drugs for it or anything. Good for you. I just depended on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was a spiritual and deepening into my spirit. Mm, I love it. You see, guys, this is what can happen. I'm going to put this book up here for the for the camera to, to really get a good look at it. And this is what I was talking about, the des a, des a desperate housewife. And um, it sounds like it's a seller. It's taking it's it's touching people. Well, I just did reorder this week, and they said they'd have the copies in this coming week, uh, possibly by Thursday or Friday. Oh, how fantastic! I, so, I'm going to get my copy too. And that's my very last one I've read, or I would leave that with you, but I will give you that, one of my well, first thank ones off you, of the new but no, the, And the the cover, you guys, is so interesting to look at. I mean, it's it makes you want to pick up the book. Well, I it. named it Desperate Housewife because of going through a depression, um, going through a struggle with our marriage, in which now my husband and I are celebrating 51 years. I have not figured it out. I'm only 39, and I just can't figure it out. Do you hear that? But um, I love it. the Lord has done so much in my life. I gave my heart to him when I was 10 years old. Oh. And he has walked with me all through my life and has been so faithful to me. Amen. And I kept hearing people say, you need to write a book. He did so many, so many awesome things in my life mm. that it's just unbelievable. My husband read that and he said, honey, said, I don't know how many people will believe all these stories except, he said, I know it's true because I've walked through them with you. Yes. So it's really been an inspiration to a lot of people. And the, and the beautiful thing is that you're listening to God. Yes. And it sounds like you've been doing that your whole life. But that you're listening to God to venture out like this. Yes. Because I know writing, I wouldn't know where to begin to write a book. I'm going to try to put together a little recipe book for my viewers and from my mother's old recipe. But to write a book like this? Mm -hmm. Well, that took just about a year. But I did go back a from year? my childhood and just wrote it. And it I don't advise anybody to do it just for a hobby. <laughs> it's not fun. It's very it's stressful. Work. <laughs> it's work. And and really, like I said before, it's not a money maker. I honestly it flabbergasted me uh, how expensive it is just to do a little book and have it printed. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. But the fact that this is a tool mm -hmm. and um, it looks like it's good reading. I made it like that. Yeah. And that's actually over in South Africa. What? A missionary in South Africa asked me, he requested, where can I get these books? He said, it's been read over there. I guess he had a copy. I don't know. Look at that. Mm -hmm. You see, this is what I try to encourage the viewers all the time, is that you never know when you plant that mustard seed, how far God's going to make that thing go and where it starts to grow. And look what you just told me. Mm -hmm. I just got my little goosebumps. I, I got to tell you, just one little yes, short, absolutely. one of the shortest chapters. I was going to mention something else, but this would be the, the my favorite chapter, I believe, in this book. And it was overcoming fear. My mm -hmm. husband and I both taught school years ago in Virginia. And we inherited a little cabin here in the Smokies that his parents had left for us. And we would come during the summer and work in the tourist business. And on my days off, I would just love to get a big old glass of iced tea and get out on that screened in back porch in that little old rustic cabin. <laughs> and wonderful. just sit and sip my tea and read a book. And um, not only was this cabin surrounded by beautiful woods, it was surrounded by cattle the cattle grazing on the farm. Really? How picturesque. Yes. 
And one day I was sitting there reading and all of a sudden I heard this startling noise and I looked at, out the screen and here was this big cow mooing at me in oh. the deepest bass voice he could afford to have, you know. Time to move. <laughs> yes, and I looked at him and it terrified me and I thought, oh no. And I was terrified of cows because I had a bull to come after me one time. That's not fun either. Oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just looked at that and it, it dawned on me that cow could not get to me. There's a screen there. So I just said, Nan, Nanny, Boo Boo, you can't get me. You and did. I, I did. With this thin screen? Yes. Okay. And you know, the nugget that came into my heart, the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And it scares a lot of us, a lot of Christians. Yes. We Sometimes Good people point. live in fear. Yes. But we are protected by that screen of blood, the blood of Jesus oh, right around I love us. It, and that guys, nugget I came to it. me and I just started saying, na na nee, boo boo. You know, <laughs> I was just singing to that cow. <laughs> so anyway, that's one of my favorite chapters. <laughs> no, that's I can see why this would be a good book. Well I've had people say I've laughed and I've cried. Mm hmm And that's it is a it's one. a combination of different things. Well, uh, more power to you because uh, I wouldn't begin to know. But now, this isn't your only book. Let's talk about well, your recipe book. Well, I worked for the Old Mill. That's what it was. And I worked as the yeah. creative food specialist. So they've had me doing some cookbooks for them. We sold about 3,000 copies of this. And then yeah. we were not going to have any more of those. And they had me to update it. So this is the newest one. This came out about three or four weeks ago. Ooh, and, um, fresh to our new, viewers. Yes, it has new recipes in it. And um, it's nice and thick. Yeah. Wow. And that's that's uh, been around a lot also. Uh, and I love the way that the Lord gives us, He gives us all gifts of various Amen. sorts. Yes, He does. And He has given me a, a gift of writing. I've enjoyed writing for Christian magazines and just recently, um, I've had three published in the upper room, if you're familiar with that devotional. Yes, I am. So I've had those, and poetry too, and that stemmed from when I worked as a children's pastor years Look ago. Look at you. I had to make a little bulletin for the children each week, and I didn't have anything other than whose birthday it was and a scripture verse, and I said, Lord, I need something. And he gave me scriptures um, and little poems so he's given me a gift of poetry see god so empowers us i mean <clears throat> and he's been walking with you and he's been getting you ready and molding you like clay mm -hmm. and look here mm -hmm. how you're how many people you can touch and have already reached mm -hmm. uh, guys this this little book here fruit pizza doesn't that sound yummy <laughs> <laughs> and it starts out with crescent rolls easy to make very easy um, Love it. The front section has recipes using oatmeal products, but the back section are just recipes I've used throughout my years of cooking. You know, Gwen, the, the main thing that interests me about the Lord or co consumes me is that we never get too old to learn, do we? Never oh, get amen. too old to learn lessons. Oh, I love that. Is that a pearl of wisdom right there? That's I love right. that. Miss mm -hmm. Becky. I love that too. Never wow. get too old. Now, I hope you viewers out there <clears throat> listen to that because we never get too old. Miss Becky, the time just flew by. Can it you did. believe this? It did. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to ask you a bunch more things, but I'm just going to sit back and read that book. And I hope you viewers out there, I hope that you've enjoyed this interview. And I hope more than anything that a mustard seed thought got planted in your brain and that you say, look what she did. I have the gift of whatever it is God's given you because God has given us all gifts. And all we have to do is believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you are a believer and a strong mm -hmm. believer. God bless Praise you. God. And God bless you guys out there. We will be right back after this. Our prayer lines are open right now. Please call at 865-680-1891. 865-680-1891. Don't go away. You're watching the I Believe TV program. Call me or text me. Don't go away. There's more to come. Okay, guys. Instead of just picking up that phone and calling me, there's another way you can reach me. Text me. But you, if you text me, it's kind of simple. Just text me your need and tell me what time it's best time to call you back. 
and I promise you I will. It's the new technology on hand, and I'm getting with the program, so you do too, okay? I don't know about you guys, but that interview went fast. Did you see that, Pastor Donnie? It did. I mean, it just seems like, you know, when you're sharing God's work, God's ways, man, it flies. Oh, my gosh. And I've known Becky for a long time, mm -hmm. and the, that she loves to write. Did you see mm -hmm. the joy in her eyes when oh, she yeah. was talking about her book and yes. how it reached people? Oh, yeah. I think it's just so much of how excited about when God puts in your spirit something to do yes and you follow through with that you know and you see God accomplish it like she was sharing how God provided the finances for it through people you know that's just amazing. compelled to their hearts yes. you know and that's what's powerful and know? she didn't have to struggle for it I mean they mm -hmm. just hear the guy plopped down some money and Amen. everybody else did and it's a beautiful Amen. thing that's always a key to ministry I always said are things that God wants you to do is which direction he leads you to go you know yes I mean, you can go against the grain of God sometimes and makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, you struggle to get something done or accomplish it. And I, I began to say, wait a minute, maybe that's not the way God wants me to go. I know. And then all of a sudden like that, he opens up a door and just pours into it, you know. Yes. So the perfect way to go. I love it. Powerful. And, and, powerful. and, and viewers, I, I want you to feel what went through Becky because I saw her eyes gleam in here. And, and when she was given, she, she her whole life, God is really molding her and, and stepping her through this thing and this oh, thing. Yeah. And she didn't even realize what, what was happening. And all of a sudden, everything came together. You could just see mm -hmm. the gleam in her eye and how she used it for God's glory. But she's always mm -hmm. been a woman of God. She always does the Bible studies. Right. Since I've known her, she's had yeah. the Bible studies at her home. Oh, yeah. she What she talked about, God gave her life to the Lord, you know, at 10 and all. 10. And, you yeah. know, whether you have done that or not, God still has a purpose you know, yes. for our lives. Each one of our lives are ordained for the goodness of the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. And everything in our life makes a difference toward that call. Yes. You know, all things work together. Romans chapter 8, you know, all things work together for them that love the Lord mm -hmm. and are called according to His purpose. And it goes he on. He says it so of, fast. Say it slower, <laughs> Pastor Donnie, for those things, that don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 8, 28. One of, I live by that verse many times in my life through struggles I was facing, knowing yeah. that all things work together for the good, okay. for them that love the, the Lord. Lord and are called according to his purpose. Called. So it, it says that, but a lot of people go, well, I don't know if I'm called. But if yeah. you continue on reading, you'll find out and, and goes on down through it. It talks about our predestined, that God has predestined our, yeah. our path. You know? Our DNA is programmed. Yes, you know, <laughs> and as he sets that path, a lot of people say, well, predestination, no matter what I do, I'm gonna go that path because God predestined me. But that's not the way predestined. And we predestined in our mind to have a show today, right? Mm -hmm. To be here, to film and all that. But mm -hmm. anything could have come into play and we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So that's what God did for us. He set a path for each and every one of our lives, just yes. like Becky, yes. you know, and some of the things she went through. She talked about depression and things. Yeah. Didn't know that that was a part of what God had her go through, you know, to fulfill it, her predestined life, you know. But at any moment in time, we can veer off of that predestination yeah. that God has for us. It's the his devil's plan. always at work. Right. He's not in control of my life as far as making me go places mm -hmm. you know that's diplomatic like that's 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 not even the way that God has he has a choice for us mm -hmm. but yet being predestined I mean he has a path that's picked for me that's the perfect path mm -hmm. if I veer off of it God will get me back on that path I just might have a new learning Detour. <laughs> a new learning in there that's what I call it. it's a learning right a new learning in there where yeah. I realize the power of God or the love of God or mercies mm -hmm. of God in that but ultimately in the end he's going to use it for his glory if yes. we let him just like through her life and now through books that she shared yes. some of the struggles she went through you know yeah. uh, we that go through these touching God, people. I bet it is I bet it is you know and I, I know I, just as she was talking about it I could feel the inspiration like for my wife I think she would love that mm -hmm. and, and see it but because it makes a difference when you know somebody's gone through exactly it. that it's and real they out, yeah they yes. reach out to the Lord you know God has many promises in his word to bring us through safely and protects mm -hmm. us he's our shield our buckler our high strong tower he's going to be with us you know uh, knowing all things are working together for good mm -hmm. uh, but we still have to turn those over to him amen you know? and sometimes like our, our, we've had in other shows it's hard to do it's hard oh, yeah. sometimes for people to just turn it over to God yeah because that devil's going to try to do everything to keep you on his oh yeah definitely corner. definitely you know but if god be for us who can, who be, can against be against us right yeah, that's right you know that's the way i look at it and but it's and, easy for us because we know those scriptures yes but when i get these viewers that call me mm -hmm. and they they don't they don't even some of them have not read the bible right i mean not even 
picked it up. Mm -hmm. I had a viewer call me and say that he had never picked up the Bible. He never had any intention, even then when he was talking to me on the phone. Right. Mm -hmm. and he says, I have no intention, so don't tell me to go read my Bible, because I've not read it, and I don't intend yes. to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So it's easy for us, because we can refer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, so how would you... How would you encourage someone like that that yeah. is telling me straight up they don't want to read the Bible, right? But they're going through some of the problems that I'm sure Miss mm -hmm. Becky had in mm -hmm. her book. Well, it's it's simple. I mean, the Word of God is what delivers us. The Bible says it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to deliver us. It sets us free, right? Because it opens up our eyes to see truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're not going to go to the Bible and read it, then somewhere you're going to have to get it because faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Uh, I always say, uh, my, I, I'm not an avid reader, you know. I, I know you say that. I, it's one of my struggles, you know. I can get into the Bible and read it like it's a book and do great and you with know it, it. <laughs> but it's about the only thing. Uh, <laughs> that's the most important one, though. <laughs> yes, that's the only reason why I've See? conditioned myself for that. But but ultimately, faith cometh by hearing and mm -hmm. hearing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So even if you're just listening to it, like the show that we're doing, or, or listening to preaching, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, I've shared before how God changed my life through a struggle I was facing, um, I couldn't read the Bible at that time because I couldn't mm -hmm. concentrate. Mm -hmm. I was struggling so bad with the issue, and, uh, and, and but I, so I sat down in front of the television and put the preaching on, mm -hmm. and just listened to the word. You know? And that's what he was doing. Yes, he 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 thanked us for the show, mm -hmm. and uh, that day you had read a, a scripture that hit him, mm -hmm. and he was calling that he didn't want to read it, but he could hear it. Hear it. He, mm -hmm. he could comprehend it if he right. heard it. Mm -hmm. So it goes again like what Miss Becky is doing. Some people can read yeah. and, and get a message and, and go to the Word, and other people other people have to just listen to it. Oh, yeah. But that's where it's But the Bible's faith covered is, it all. Faith is developed in that, that yes. hearing it, you know. And main thing is powerful. believing. Oh, yeah. It's the main important thing. Oh, yeah. I like to read the Bible out loud. So that I, I do hear all the time. Extra senses, you know. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes I read something that I've read so many times, and then I'm like, okay, 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 and then I'm like, wait a minute, and then I just start to read it out loud. Yes. Since I like to talk, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm talking, and next thing I know, I'm talking to God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My talking yeah. mode kicks in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it is God's word is powerful, you know, and just hearing that testimony in her life and many yeah. others that we have. Yeah. God can use you in any aspect, you know? know. We we limit we look at a lot of a lot of times and we say, Well, I can, you know, well I can't preach, you know, I'm not a preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, where I can't do this or I can't but you know what? What God has given your hands something to do, you know. Mm -hmm. We are his hands, we say in, in the earth. And and God has ordained our lives for something and mm -hmm. purpose. We're all created with purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we turn our lives over to God and give it to him, begin to walk those steps out, you know. Man, God will use you. I, I mean, know. He will use you. All you got to do is say, Lord, just like we're talking about with others, you know, they just say, Lord, here I am. Yes. I, I'm, I'm for you and, and whatever you choose and want, you know. And, and hold on, guys, because when you open your heart up to God and you say, God, use me, prepare for a flood. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can and will, but baby steps sometimes. He'll, he'll, he'll work us into yeah. it, you know. Well, He grooms us, I think, yes. but we don't even know we're being groomed. Oh, yeah. He yeah. whips us into shade, no, puts us in timeouts. We don't even know all this stuff is going no. on. We think it's yeah. life. I saw Him develop my life later, you know, <laughs> See? as I became a minister and pastor yeah. of church and, and minister, and I, I saw where He developed my life and brought me to that place. Yeah. Because what I do now, I would have never exactly. been caught doing I know. previously, you know. So, um, but God molded me, you know. Yeah. That's what we have to learn in life. That everything that God brings our way, He's going to use for our purpose if we understand that, no matter good or bad. Yep. God can use it for His glory. Yes. That's what he chooses to do, and that's what he wants to do. And if we know? try to fight him, he's still going to get us. <laughs> he'll yeah. break us, and then he'll say, okay, now, yes. <laughs> ding, yes, you <laughs> a know, God moment. It's, it's just hearing the voice of the Lord, you know. God yes. gifted all of us with yes. things that we can do, Yeah. you know, talents, gifts, abilities that he put within us, whether it's administration, whether it's speaking, whether it's uh, uh, just wisdom and knowledge that we've gained, you know. Some people can work with their hands and, mm -hmm. and build things, you know. Yeah. All of it's important to the body of Christ and to Amen. God's command, God's fulfillment. That you is know? so true. And the Word tells us that we've been we've been made stewards, you know, of things that, that He's given us. Yes. And the question I'm reading is, a book on that right yeah. now. The question <laughs> is, what do we do with that? Yes. What What are we doing we with the things God has given yes. us? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to know that I've been a good steward of it yes. and that God's 
taking the things I've done and applied them to his will. And not only that, it's that sowing our life into that, God will reap back out of that and yes. bring blessing to Amen. us through it. I through. Mean, yeah. <laughs> it's so amazing. Cool. It is. And it's such a joy. It's yeah. fun. Uh, viewers, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say something right now to you all because I feel led to do this. And, you know, a lot of us, and I continue to say this because I answer the phone calls and I listen to the texts and I answer back texting or I email you guys back. But you all are asking me things like, well, we hear you and Pastor Donnie talking about what can I do and how we can all be. But I know you sit there and say, but I'm just a bad person. I don't. I don't know the Bible. I don't feel God could use me. I don't feel God could want me around that anybody would give me an ear because I've been such a bad person. So I want you to I want you to think about this right now that God loves you. Yes, he amen. loves you unconditionally. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you will always be important to God. You will always be used by God. All you have to do is like some of our guests have said God, use me. Yeah. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you out there to think about maybe all you want to do is make some phone calls. Maybe all you want to do is cook for somebody that can't cook for themselves. Maybe you want to just pick up somebody. I mean, what kind of thing is, how hard is it to say, I'm going to go pick volunteer to pick up somebody and take them from their home to the store and back. Yeah. Now, that's a major, major thing. Become a believer, join the body of believers, and act out God's word. God loves you. God put in my heart five years ago to produce this show, and it's about uniting the body of believers. And every show, we're going to reach out and touch you guys and see if we can't unite you as a body of believers, one by one. As in Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, we should be one body, praising our one Lord and our one God. It's not about where you go to church or if you go to church or, you know, it's about do you believe? Have faith. Believe in God. Become a believer. If God is in your heart, the world changes. Your whole life changes. And you'll be so happy because you're going to be full of God's love. I want you to join our body of believers. Yes, I'm pointing at that camera and I'm catching you right there. I want you to join our body of believers. Unbelievable, Pastor Donnie. What do you think? I think it's awesome what God is doing. <laughs> You're all charged up. <laughs> yes. Amen. Are you going to tell the viewers to hang in here for next week? Well, that's what we always want to do. Yeah. We want to tell you, don't miss it. You need to tune back in next week or find us some other place that we're on the web, text, phone call, whatever it possibly is. But you definitely want to tune right back here next week and see us once again. Who knows what God has in store? I bet it'll be something that'll change your life. I love it. You're right on it, Pastor Donnie. <laughs> Our prayer lines are open right now. Please call at 865-680-1891. 865-680-1891. Now you can watch the show again on creativechristiannetwork.com. Join us next week same time and please don't forget to tell a friend thank you for watching i believe with dr quinn ford